Hey my friend, it's the welcome to the Court Hangout show. Hey, can I ask you this question? What if in your social network app, you want to search for a specific user to send a message to? Would you go through millions if not billions of users to see which user is that user? Or maybe in your game, you want to send out a notification to 10 million people. Would you go over each person and click the send notification button or um, hit write some code to each of the person for 10 million times? It would be dumb if we do that, right? That is what the computer is powerful for. As of, as of right now, I um, at, at the time of I record this screencast, we haven't been able to make a computer, an artificial intelligence that is as smart as the, uh, the human brain. But we are able to create a computer that can calculate billion trillions of calculations that is so powerful they can do one calculation all all over again so many times and that is the power of a loop it means that we can do something all all over again with just several statements instead of writing millions lines of code that's what we'll talk about in this demo of the corner of shell for loop in Swift. Let's burst out your Swift, I'm sorry, your Xcode, create a new playground and we'll go into the demo. And after this demo, I have a surprise, surprise, su surprise for you. <laughs> that is, I want you to enroll, I want to uh, give you access to my new iOS workshop in which I will teach you how to build iOS app, how to build, co uh, how to code in Swift, how to program in Swift and build an app from scratch. That is the new free iOS workshop I have for you. But let's go into the demo, talk about for loop in Swift first. All right, I will create a new playground for this demo and we'll call that loop or for loop. I have three ideas here today to share with you about for loop. Number one is about range. Where is that range in script? A range is a sequence of numbers has the starting number and the last number. Okay, it's that simple. Now, we can use a range using, um, okay, it's large, like a little bit. There we go. Let's say I want to have variable con range equals 1 to 100. Okay, so this means that this range, it contains all the number, all integer from 1 to 100. How about we have let up to 10 equals 0 to 10. Okay, so this is a range that has all the number from 0 to 10, I mean integer numbers. Um, let's say I want to have let uh, up to 9, okay, but I want to do 0 to less than 10. So it means that from 0 to the last integer that is less than 10, so it is 9. Now the reason why, the reason why I want to introduce you to this is you will use this a lot in for loop. And what is for loop, by the way? Now let's look at a very, very simplistic example. There is um, one time, okay, I'm guilty of this. One time, uh, I'm, I just learned about for loop. I just learned about for loop. And I want to impress my mom by sending her a message that has 10, 100 times I love you. Okay, so we will do a for loop and print something to the console 100 times. And we can do this for i stands for index or the counter in the range of 1 to 100. Okay, and then how about I will print i to the console? Let's see what happens. Okay, you see this? It prints out from 1, which is this guy, to 100 which is this guy. So it goes over the loop. It runs for the first time, i is 1, and then it goes here, print i to the console. And then for the second time, it goes here, and then for the second time, it says i is 2, right? Is 2 is still in the range? Yeah, 2 is still in the range of 1 to 100. So it says print i. And then it goes into i equals 100, is 100 still in the range of 1 to 100? Yeah, then it prints out 100. 
and then after that it goes this is very 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 incredibly important so pay attention listen it goes to 100 i is now 100 in one so it prints out uh, it check if 101 is it in the range of 1 to 100 no right so it's don't execute this it skip out this block and then goes back here okay so how about here we want to print done with the loop like this and then you will see that it says done with the loop right how about in here we want to print out that i love you so print here a string and inside here i and we can use an uh, emoji using the holy control command and space key control command space key and then i heard uh, i will search for the heart key heart here okay i love you there we go all right so I love you one more times. That's kind of cheesy. <laughs> All right. Now, this example is pretty dummy, but it shows you the logic of a for loop. I hope that every time you use a for loop, for the first few times, run through the logic that I just show you. I is from one, and then print thing, print thing, execute things, and then go back. I is now two, print thing, print thing, execute thing, and then goes up to 100. 101 still in the range or not those things okay because as we move on we will talk about this example we're going to calculate the sum of an array so let's say we have an array of greats and we count it 100 uh, 200 300 99 199 299 all of those things okay if if there's some um, 300 except the SAT. sat I don't know. <laughs> and then we have the sum, a variable called sum. And what we want to do is we want to calculate the sum, the total grades of all of these grades inside the grade array. So if we want to calculate the total grade of all of these grades, can we do, uh, sh what should we do this? Yeah, one way we can do is sum equals to grade sub zero and then plus grade sub one plus grade sub two, you start to fall asleep, right? <laughs> grade sub three, okay? And then grade sub four, five, six, seven. Hey, what if, what if I double the size of this grade like this? One, two, three, four, five, ten. Okay, I don't even know how many elements inside here. I just lost the count. Can we do that? Yeah, we, we can just write by hand like this, but it's dummy. So let's comment this out. It is dummy if we do that. So how can we do this? Using the power of a for loop. Because if you look at the pattern here, the pattern here is we run over each and every single element inside this array, right? We have zero, one, two, three, four, five until the end. So what happens is we just have to run through a loop and that loop has the index of each of the element increments one by one starting from the first element in which, hey, quiz question, what is the first index of the array of the element? The index of the first element inside the array. Index of the first element in an array. What is that? Zero. What is the index? of the last element is an array. Yeah, the number of elements minus one, right? So can you create the number of uh, the last index first? So the last index, let's last index is, is one, great dot count, right? And then we minus one, like this. And then we will run a for loop starting, now this time is from zero, because the first element is indexed at zero, and the last element is indexed at uh, the number of grades that minus one, or this last index, right? So we can do for i in, hey, by the way, this doesn't have to be i, you can do index, for index in zero to the last index, like this, and a curly braces, okay? So for i in that, then I would do let the current index equals index just so you know. 
and then how about I will print out the current index okay and then we'll do let's the current number equals now as we run this for loop the current number will be the great subscript the current index right the current index is 0 or is 10 then we subscript 10 to have the current number that this for loop is currently at so we do great subscript current number like that and then all we have to do is sum equals sum plus the current number because we want to add this new sum is the last sum plus the current number I'm sorry this is current index right so that's the new sum is the last sum the last total plus the current number okay and then you will see that it runs 48 times 48 times and let's see some over here what is that several thousand nine thousand something isn't that cool you can just have this thing over here hey the way that I'm doing here for you is I just go and break down every single step for you and let's do this in just uh, two lines of code let's do it or three um, we have some right so let's do another total equal zero still you have to declare a total or some what you want to find outside of the scope of this for loop the scope means that the implementation of this for loop because outside of this if you declare something in here like the current index it will not exist exist out of this so if we do current index here okay it will show an error because there's no current index is de uh, declared inside this for loop after it exits out it will delete everything now let's finalize this video by doing another total and do it so that it's just one line of code or two lines of code okay so we do for the index or let's this time i in the range of zero to i will open and close parentheses so that it's grab around very easy looking and then we do grades dot count minus one open and close parentheses you see this and this grades dot count minus one inside a brace um, parenthesis like this is basically the last index, right? And then here we'll do sum or total equals to total plus grade sub i, okay? And then over here, if you search for total, it should be nine thousand five hundred and seventy-six. It's the same. Alright my friend, that is for loop in Swift. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. You can see that for loop it will be very very helpful for you in the future and I can guarantee you that you will use this so so many times as you move along in your future project. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and can you do me two favors? Number one, can you subscribe to this channel so that I can continue to deliver to you new free iOS trainings every single week? And number two, what I want to do for you is I just create a new online workshop, online iOS workshop that I, you and I are going together. We'll go through together. I will show you how to build a new iPhone app from scratch. And I will teach you how to program in Swift, how to build iPhone apps from scratch. And every single week, I will deliver to you free training, free iOS development training. And if you would love to go for that, I would love to coach you how to become an iOS developer. So what you can do is go to the link on this video or click the link below this video in the description and you can sign up for the new free iOS workshop that I do online for you. There you just enter your name and email and then you can register for the workshop. Until then, I see you in the online workshop. Go out there every single day of your life, learn new things, craft your ideas and contribute to the world.